People everywhere are always on the move, and it's important to try and provide a system of transport that will meet everybody's needs. Here in Greece, one of the most important means of transport is a fleet of ferries. These sail throughout the year, mostly from the mainland port of Piraeus to the many Greek islands in the Aegean Sea. Well, here I am on one of the ferries in the Aegean. It's one of about 60 ferries serving almost as many small islands scattered over a wide area. And for those islands, the ferry is a lifeline. All day, every day, there's a constant flow of traffic pouring onto the ferries. Lorries packed with vital supplies for both the islanders' everyday needs and goods for the many hotels you find on the islands. As well as the lorries, the ferries carry cars and other private vehicles. They're also the main form of transport for anyone else traveling out to the islands. But it's not always possible to squeeze everyone in. It's usually the lorries that get left behind, breaking the lifeline to the islands. As the ferries sail away, they leave behind a queue of trucks who must wait their turn to sail. The wait may be a long one. For some islands, a matter of days. For others, a matter of hours. To the man in the street, catching a ferry can be very confusing, especially if you're a tourist. If you don't know the system, you might find it difficult to find which ferry you want. That's because different islands are served by ferries owned and operated by many different companies. And these companies like to compete with each other. It certainly pays to know your way around the system. That's something the locals know about already. For them, the problem is more a question of cost. They use the ferry like a bus service, either for shopping or business on the mainland. The local people know how the ferries run and, more importantly, which one goes where. If you don't know where the ferry leaves from, it's all too easy to miss the boat. Another problem for the ferry traveller is the time it takes to get to one's destination. Time is costly, both for the local people and for the tourist.
A lot of the ferry boats tend to favour the islands the tourists like to go to. Well, where's this boat going? Let's ask the purser. Could you tell us something about the route this boat's taking? Uh, we start from Piraeus, going through Syros, Paros, Naxos to Santorini. Uh, we overnight there and we return the same way back to Piraeus. Do you always run at the same time? At this time of the year, we start from Piraeus at 8.30. From the 1st of April, we will start at 8 and uh, in the high season, 7.30. Why different times at different times of the year? We extend the trip in the high season down to Crete. So we gain the time to have uh, Creta connected the same night to be back in the next morning to start the new trip from Santorini back to Piraeus. Leaving at different times at different times of the year can be very confusing. But there's another problem. The Aegean is scattered with islands, any one of which you may want to get to. From Hania back to Piaras. Uh -huh. So then I have a complete circle, but you want to do it a different way? Yeah. We, want to, we first wanted to go to um, Paris uh -huh. and then to Nexus. Well, how easy is it to get to the island of your choice? It yeah. depends from the island, I think. Yeah, it depends on the island. If you go to a heavily populated island, it might be easy. But if you go to, a, say, an island that's less accessible, it might take a couple of days for a, another boat. It's easy to get to some of the islands, but if you want to go from island A to island B, you might have to go back to Athens to do it first. Uh, it's a bit hard to work out how to get hot from island to island sometimes. Some of it's easy, some of it's not so easy. You only seem to serve a few islands. How do the other islands get served? They are served through other boats belonging to various uh, companies. They are all connected anyway to each other and all to Piraeus. It seems that if they sell tickets on that line, they know all about it. And if they don't sell tickets on that line, never heard of it. <laughs> so you've got to go and try another one. And, uh, but if you keep trying, you'll find out everything eventually. It's just a slow process sometimes. The basis of the islands that I'm selecting is because you look at the islands that have a lot of connections yes. and that allow you to kind of go around the different ones. You first have to look at the connections and then you choose well, then it's very easy to go to the other islands. Yesterday I came and I ho was hoping to get go to Mykonos, but they didn't have any connection. And I said, well, where, where can I go instead? And they said, oh, Syros. So I selected Syros. Making connections to other islands may be a problem for the tourists. But imagine what it's like for the local people. The boat they may want to catch may not sail until the next day. And the waiting costs time and money. Just now we're between seasons, so there are fewer operating and they're going to fewer places. At the moment there's enough room for passengers, but there isn't enough room for the freight. So you can imagine what it's like in summer. Lots of tourists on the boats. They're jammed. The boats, not enough boats. But then if there were more boats, there would be more people and the islands would be overcrowded. It's a problem. Do the islanders ever get cut off? Sometimes the winter time, because of the weather always, not of the reason, they could wait five or a week to catch a boat. Here, on the island of Paros, the weather can be severe. It's not unknown for the islanders to become cut off for days. mail comes in, no mail goes out. Everybody who's there has to stay, and whether you plan on it or not, you stay on the island. Today, the ferry has made it, but only just. Had it not, the islanders would have gone short of supplies. Milk and things like that are brought to the island, all dairy products mostly, except for cheese. Basically everything but vegetables. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do about the weather. Uh -huh. 
So it would seem that the service isn't to everyone's satisfaction. But can a better one be provided? Can things be improved without either putting up costs or getting more ships? It would seem to be a simple problem. But is it? Let's ask an expert. Mike Garrett is a transport planner from Liverpool University. What sort of problem is it? Well, transport planning can be relatively straightforward. It's essentially about discovering where trucks and passengers and cars are coming from and want to go to, and the most cost-effective way of getting them where they want to go to, as quickly as possible, and with the least use of ships and fuel and crew and so forth, so that one can make a comparison between what exists at the moment and what might be done in the future. Can you cope with thinking about all this? Not without a computer. Someone who had the job of helping to analyze the problem was Dr. Enzo Calogero. But how can a computer help in trying to design a better service? The computer can actually work out the details of the service. It can work out the best ship or ships to be used on that route. It can work out the most economical speed, uh, which will reduce costs, fuel costs especially. It will work, work out, it will work out the capacity of the ships to be used, the frequency of the service. It will work out the total use of time spent on board or waiting between services and the use of cost. On the basis of this detailed analysis, the planner will be finally in a position to choose between his alternatives. The main part of the operation was done on a computer in Athens. The first job was to build up a database, beginning with the timetable for all the ferries leaving Piraeus. What they needed to know was the island each ferry serves, the day of departure, the time of departure, and a code for the ship. The computer now has a listing of all the sailings to all the islands for every day. It's now possible to organize the data in a number of ways. For example, the computer can produce a list of all the sailings to all the islands on any one particular day. The next thing the planner needs to do is the position of all ports on the islands and the mainland. For that, we can use their longitude and latitude. That puts the port on the island of Paros at this point and the port of Piraeus at this point. From this and other information, the computer can now be used to calculate distances between the islands, the cost of fuel used and the time of travel for each of the various routes. The routes are the next thing the planner needs to know about. From Piraeus, boats go to almost every corner of the Aegean. But for the planner, this is too complicated. It needs simplifying. If we look at just a couple of routes, it's possible to arrange the islands they serve into groups. One group on this route, two on the other. We can arrange all the other islands in the same way. We can now simplify the routes according to the island groups they serve. First, those serving one group. Next, those serving two. And finally, those serving three or more. The overall picture may still look complicated, but it's an arrangement that helps the planners get a clearer idea of the links, especially when they add the remaining routes from the other mainland ports. The other information that was needed was the number of passengers traveling. 
the numbers getting on and the numbers getting off the boats at each port of call. They can get that from the sale of tickets. They also need to know details about all the lorries, where they're coming from and where they're going to. Then there's the data concerning the boats themselves. How many lorries and cars they can carry. The number of passengers they can transport. The size of the crews. The speed of the ships. And the fuel they use. With all this data in the computer, the planners can now look at the effects of trying different routes. What they want to know is whether a different route or a different link will cut down cost or travel time. And now for another change. What if we change the links? What effect will the changes have on the demand for tickets? What if we change the routes? Will the change make it possible to get everyone on board when they want to travel? giving priority to freight. With the help of the computer, the planners and analysts were able to build up on the map a completely new system of routes. So, what was the outcome? The final conclusion on this study was quite rewarding for the effort which went in. We were able to redesign the fleet of ships. We had to recommend a change of many of the older ships, simply because they are slower and they are more expensive in fuel. Modern ships ha are more economical in the usage of fuel and they are faster. How the cost of the new fleet would be no greater than the cost of the earlier fleet. This is because fewer ships were needed, though more expensive. It's roughly a half, in fact, the number of ships which could do the same service, running day and night, as opposed to the slower pace of service of the present fleet. So it's really better service for the same cost. Without the computer, it would have been very difficult to study the whole of a complicated system and come up with a reliable alternative plan to give the Greek islanders a better service.